some of our strongest interviews are actually behavioral question based. Um, I want them to be able to speak to scenarios that they've experienced even more so now. Problem solving and critical thinking, being able to think on your feet is really important because you're not going to be scripted in every single environment. Um, we have some clients that are not really scripted. They have guidelines. And so you're functioning in a lot of gray area. So my classic question is always, tell me about what your most difficult customer. What was the situation? And looking back, would you have done anything differently? That's a great question because it shows me, are they going to go off on a tangent for 20 minutes and be able to actually answer the question? Are they going to be able to come up with something that is a true issue? Are they going to walk through their side of it, how they address the issue? Are they going to hit things like, I wanted to retain the customer, or they'd already spoken to three people by the time I got there? Um, and how self-reflective can they be around that? Would you have done anything differently? So that's a great question that right off the bat will tell me how this person problem solves. Uh, we'll also ask behavioral questions around, um, around uh, the mental health space too. So when you are when you are dealing with customer issues day in, day out, what do you do to set up boundaries so that you don't take it home every day? And I want to hear some healthy coping mechanisms. I, I hear it all across the board, like my animals, or I do yoga, or I'm breathing, or but you can tell the people that recognize that they have to have healthy boundaries, they have to have barriers. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to be successful in the role. I'll ask about, you know, what were they able to bring to the table in previous roles? If I were to go to their colleagues, what would they say that they bring to the table or that they're able to contribute to the community? Because very often when they're speaking in context of their peers, you get some really genuine answers. We'll definitely ask about technology, too, because I think that's one of the biggest challenges where you may have before, because we're pulling people from, you know, retail, food service, who knows, they may not have contact center background nowadays. And before, you would have three people next to you who would be able to say, oh, you click this, 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 and this. We don't have that in a virtual environment. And so not only have we also instituted some basic computer screening assessments just to make sure that people can actually kind of deal with a computer and find their way around it. Um, We've even had a client that uh, was working on all Macs, for example, and they found it was a little bit challenging for anyone who hadn't worked in an Apple environment. So they even incorporated in their training kind of an intro to Mac training, which I thought was really, really smart um, as a level up for candidates who would otherwise be really anxious about learning the technology. Uh, because when you're dealing with technology, that can be very frustrating if it's not something you're comfortable with. So I'll ask, I'll say, okay, what systems have you worked with? Have you had to work with dual monitors? Okay, walk me through what you had to do at once. Were you taking notes in one system? Were you pulling up knowledge in another system? So I can get a sense for how they multitask as well. So I think the more you can ask behavioral questions that really get to, at the end of the day, customer service is so attributes driven, right? Can you be empathetic and caring? Do you have good critical thinking and problem solving skills? Are you passionate about people? Are you tech savvy at the same time? The profile is still 80% the same as prior to the pandemic, but there's some new things that we're finding now in going hybrid or remote that we've rolled back into the recruiting process at the beginning. And I would absolutely encourage companies to do that. Uh, and again, that's part of having a seamless experience all the way from recruiting to training uh, is if the trainer's telling you, hey, I, I'm, I'm running across this similar issue with new hires, well then let's pull that up into the screening process so that we're not running into it or we're addressing it more quickly. So it has to be a seamless give and take and it's a constantly iterative process too on the recruiting side.